Hey guys, it's Gawain, and today we're going to be taking a look at perhaps one of the simplest operators on attack, Buck. Buck is a two-speed two-armor attack operator that specializes in soft destruction and fragging. He's got a relatively versatile primary gadget, good guns, and decent secondary gadgets. Good Buck players can control the enemy's positioning by opening up sightlines onto them, forcing them to move or die. Let's learn how to play him. Buck is equipped with his Super Shell Launcher, which launches, well, Super Shells, of which he gets 36 in total. The Super Shell Launcher is an underbarrel shotgun attachment that functions probably how you think it would. You press your primary gadget button to swap between firing your gun and firing your underbarrel shotgun. The shotgun has a mag size of 5 plus 1 shells, and you get 30 in reserve. It's pretty easy to use as you just point and shoot at a soft wall, floor, ceiling, hatch, or barricade to create a big hole in it. In other words, shoot at wall, wall go bye bye. Buck's super shells have increased soft destruction when compared to other shotguns, making this the most versatile destruction gadget in the game as you can break open soft surfaces from range. The main usage of this gadget is making sight lines around the map, whether that's making holes above or below sight to cut off defender rotates, or breaking open some walls to make longer lines of sight down corridors to challenge defenders from further away. He can also go below main breaches to get bandit batteries, cade claws and mute jammers off the main wall to help out your hard breaches too, and trust me, they'll be thankful for it. The main and best usage for this gadget has to be vertical play though. Opening up either the floor or ceiling of a site can cause the defenders to panic or force them to reposition. The best places to open up are sight lines onto rotate holes, common hiding spots, commonly held positions, and default plant spots. This way you can almost flush defenders out of sight because if they sit underneath where you open up, they are likely to get shot and die from it. Normally when opening up floors and ceilings, it will take at least two shots to break through both layers of the soft floor because of the metal bars blocking your pellets, so keep an eye on your skeleton key ammo as you may want it for something else during the round. Other ways to use your super shells are opening up hatches on top of the map for your team and helping a maverick out by removing the soft wall after he tricks a reinforced one. To summarise a bit, you have 36 shells with increased soft destruction to create sight lines around the map with, use them sparingly to conserve your ammo reserve. It's also a good idea to go into a training grounds match and open up the floors and ceilings around the map to get a good grasp of where you are and where you should be opening up for each site. Finally, you can also swap to this underbarrel shotgun faster than you can a secondary weapon, and it acts as a secondary weapon if you have the GON6 equipped. Definitely remember that you have an underbarrel shotgun if your primary runs out of ammo and you have the GON6 for your secondary weapon. Yup, that's me, and you're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Buck's primary weapon options are the C8 SFW Assault Rifle and the Camus Marksman Rifle. His secondary weapon options are the Mark 1 9mm handgun and the GON6 hand cannon. I personally use the C8 Safe for Work paired with the GON6. The C8 is a relatively hard hitting assault rifle with a good fire rate and access to every scope up to the 1.5 times. It has a bit of a recoil kick which can be difficult to control at times but having a flash hider equipped should mitigate it a bit. It's also worth noting that you can't attach any foregrips due to the underbarrel shotgun. In the right hands, the C8 can absolutely shred, so definitely learn the recoil if you're going to main book. As for the cameras, it's a good for a DMR, with decent damage and a decent semi-automatic fire rate. It's got low recoil and access to every scope up to three times. It can open up soft hatches, allowing you to conserve skeleton key ammo, but not too much as you can want to have hatches with the super shell. I much prefer the C8. As for the GON6, it's good to bring extra utility to destroy a deployable shield, bulletproof camera, or something else similar. Whilst you do sacrifice having an actual secondary weapon, the C8 has a 30 plus 1 round magazine, and Buck has an underbarrel shotgun which does have quite drastic damage drop off, but it's better than nothing. The Mark 1 9mm is an average pistol that's an okay backup weapon. I advise using the GON6 over it though. In terms of secondary gadgets, Buck gets access to 3 stun grenades, 
or two hard bridge charges. I personally opt for the hard bridge charges because when playing above sight, it's likely that the hatch is reinforced, so being able to open it and drop down can be incredibly useful. Furthermore, any exterior walls I want to get through can also be reinforced, and hard bridge charges allows me to pass through them still. Stun grenades can be useful as they can burn grenade catching gadgets, flush enemies out of position, or just flash them for easier kills. I think hard breach charges suit Buck's kit and playstyle more than flashbangs, but it is up to you. For the drone phase, I find it's useful to position a drone in the room I plan to play from if I'm going to breach above or below sight. This way I can see if any defenders hide in that room or at least go that way so I'm ready for them. You can also save your drone and spawn to drone during the action phase, but you need to know where sight is to know where you should be breaching. To start off the action phase, drone yourself into the building and the room you plan to start breaking floors or ceilings from. Take any necessary gunfights to take map control above or below sight so that you are safe when breaching. I find that the hardest part of playing Buck is being aware of my surroundings and if any enemies are pushing me, so drone thoroughly and take periodic breaks from breaching soft surfaces to check your surroundings for any roamers. Ideally you should get some kills from your sightlines, but even if you just force defenders out of positions, then you have done your job. Destroy any bulletproof utility you can with your GON-6 and open a reinforced hatch or two with your hard bridge charges so you can drop into sight if needed. When one of your teammates has planted, make sure to create a hole underneath the diffuser so that you can watch and kill any defenders trying to counter defuse. Your main priority is flushing enemies out of positions by creating angles they can get shot from, just make sure you're safe when doing so. Buck's gadget doesn't have any direct counters other than hard walls because he can't breach those. However, sneaky roamers like Cav can kill you easily, and anyone with a C4 can C4 you from below if you're playing above. To prevent these, be as aware of your surroundings as possible, and play around hard floor as much as possible to try not to get a C4. Use your super shells to play vertical and put extra pressure on the defenders, hopefully making them panic and make mistakes for you and your team to capitalize on. Use the C8 SFW for a hard and fast hitting assault rifle that can shred enemies when you learn the recoil for it. Go into a training grounds or custom game to learn the best places to open up on each map and increase your efficiency when using your super shell launcher. Use the GON6 to assist your team in clearing out defender utility, hopefully making it easier to pull off a site execute. Be calculated when using your super shells. Treat this gadget as a soft destruction scalpel, rather than something to spam on floors and walls. Overall, Buck is an easy operator to play in my opinion because his kit is very simple. The only learning curves are the recoil of the C8 and being aware of who is around you when playing vertical. Learn the best places to open up for each site on each map, how to control the C8, how to be aware of your surroundings when breaching vertically, and you're sure to become a pretty decent bug player. Thank you all for watching, I do hope you enjoyed. If you found this guide helpful in any way, shape or form, please do consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends as that helps grow the channel, which is very much appreciated. As always, all the clips you saw in this video were taken from my Twitch stream, link will be on screen and in the description. Goyo is next for the Siege series, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.